Hello, today we're going to do the last lesson in unit three. It's called a taxing situation. And the quote is, says, in this world, nothing can be said to be certain except for death and taxes. And that quote's from Benjamin Franklin. <clears throat> so today we're going to be talking about um, your income taxes based on your wages. And there's a couple different taxes that we pay. Um, we pay to the federal government. And depending on what state you live in, you don't pay or you do pay a state income tax. So in Michigan, we pay a state income tax. There are um, a handful of states where you don't pay a state income tax. So that saves you about um, four to six percent. Some states are even more than that. Um, I know Tennessee, Florida, Texas, I believe South Dakota. There's a few others that don't have an income tax, which is really nice. So based on your in um in your based on your income and deductions okay so um when you go to get a job you fill out a form called a w-2 no called an i-9 to get your w-2 at the end of the year but your i-9 form um tells them how much money they should withhold from your taxes trying to estimate as accurate as possible um, so that at the end of the year, you don't owe any and you really shouldn't be getting any back because otherwise the government's holding your money for no purpose. So down here at the bottom, it says if you earn a paycheck through a process called withholding, taxes are automatically taken from the amount you're earned. The amount of tax that is withheld is based on two factors. One, it's based on how much you earn and, um, and paperwork you fill out through your employer describing how many other people depend on you financially. Those are called deductions. So you can have deductions for if you have a spouse that you provide for or children that you provide for. The intent is to estimate the amount of tax that you'll owe at the end of the year and pay some of it during each pay period so that you don't end up with a big bill that you can't afford to pay at the end of the year. When it's time to file a tax return, you'll find out if you pay too much, which entitles you to a refund or too little, which means you need to pay more. Our tax system is designed so that people who make more money pay a higher percentage of their income and in taxes than do those who make less money. The range in which your income falls is known as a tax bracket, and the bracket you're in will determine how much of your income you will owe. It's essentially impossible to understand taxes without understanding tax brackets, so that's where we're going to start. And they do kind of change from year to year. So there are four different filing statuses. You can file as a single, which is self-explanatory. You can file married filing jointly, which is when a married couple files a single return for both. You can file married filing separately, which is when married individuals decide to file separate returns. I think usually that's if you're getting divorced, but I'm not sure. And you can also file as head of household, which is for unmarried individuals who financially support others. There are different income levels that you qual that qualify you for certain brackets, depending on which filing status applies to you. The following is a tax table of, from 2018. The worksheet that you're going to um, work on to practice this idea is um, more of a current 2021, I believe. So here are the different tax rates, and here are the four different ways that you can file for your taxes. So the way this works um, is down below. It says for each filing status, the range of incomes listed in that column determines which tax bracket an individual falls into. For example, notice that in the second row of the married filing separately column right here, the range is 9,526 to 38,700. And that row has 12% in the tax column over here. This tells us that a married taxpayer filing separately with taxable income between 9,526 and 38,700 is in the 12% tax bracket. In a while, we'll study exactly what this tells us. Okay, so let's just learn how to read this. Number one says if a person filing a single, as single has taxable income of 42,000, what tax bracket is she in? Okay, 42,000 under a single, would be in between these two numbers here. So this person is in the 22% tax bracket. What about a married couple filing jointly? So a married couple filing jointly, um, 
So if it's a married couple filing jointly and they make 42,000, then they're in this bracket right here. They're in this category right here. So they would fall into the 12%. So married filing jointly making 42,000, they would be in the 12% rate. Right? Okay. It says now for the big question, how much would that single person pay in taxes? If you said 22% of 42,000, that's a fine guess. An incorrect one, mind you, but a fine guess nonetheless. So what's the deal? What does the 22% tax bracket mean? So in short, all taxpayers who are single pay 10% on the first $9,525 in taxable income. That's right here. Then anything over that goes into the next income bracket. So they then pay 12% on the next 29,175, which is the amount that falls into the range 9,526 to 38,700. Okay, so that is 29,175 difference. Finally, they pay 22% of the amount left over 38,700. So even though a lot of people think that being in the 22% bracket means they're paying 22% of their income and in taxes, that's just not true. They're only paying 22% on the amount over 38,700. The majority of their income is probably being taxed at a much lower rate, okay? So this first chunk of your money is being taxed at 10%. The next chunk of your money, if it falls in here, it's gonna be taxed at 12%. And then the next chunk of your money that falls into here is gonna be taxed at 22%. Okay, so we're gonna break it down. So on page 347, it says, computing tax out for a tax bracket. <clears throat> Use the information just provided, calculate the amount of tax that a single person would pay on income of 42,000. So it says, we need to look at the information in the tax bracket line by line and break our calculation into distinct pieces. First, our taxpayer would pay 10% of the first 9,525. Okay. That's what falls right here. So 10% of 9,525 <clears throat> is $952.50. Next, look at the 12% row. Since her income is more than the 38,700 boundary, so the boundary is the number on the right, that's the top boundary. She has to pay 12% on the full amount that falls in that range. We find this by subtracting the upper boundary of that bracket minus the upper boundary of the previous bracket. So 38,700 to 9525, that means there's 29,175 that falls into the second bracket. So total of second bracket. So she pays 12% of that entire second bracket because her income falls just above it. So that means she pays an additional $3,501. And this is the tax from the first bracket. So now we're in the 22% row. So we need to find 22% of the part of her income that, uh, that's above 38,700. This would be the difference between her 42,000 in income and the 38,700. <clears throat> so 22% of that difference is 0. 0.22 times 3,300 is 726. So all of first bracket and then all of the second bracket and then this is how much of the third, so part of the third bracket. So finally, we add up the amounts we've calculated, 95250, 3501, and 726. <clears throat> so her total tax owed is $5,179.50. So how much would the taxpayer in the solved example have overpaid if she had misunderstood what the 22% tax bracket means and simply pay 22% of her income in federal tax? So she would have paid 22% of all of the 42,000 So she would have paid 9,240 
And if we subtract what she really has to pay, she would have overpaid by 4060 and 80 cents. Glad she didn't. Okay. So page 348 says, since many Americans are, shall we say, somewhat math challenged, the Internal Revenue Service, the IRS, the government agency responsible for collecting taxes, publishes tables that let filers look up the amount of tax they should pay. Their documentation even includes an example with the instructions in, the, in, the, in this case for the Form 1040, which we'll study in a bit. Yeah, so it says, Mr. and Mrs. Brown are filing a joint return. Their tax table income in on the form 1040, <clears throat> line 10 is 25,300. First, they find their taxable income line, which is 25,300. So it's this one right here. Next, they find a column for married filing jointly right here. The amount shown where the taxable income line and filing status column meet is 2,658. This is the tax amount they should enter in the entry space on form 1040-11A. So it kind of makes it an easy way to find your tax amount that you're going to pay because they kind of break it down by small categories. Number three says use the tax bracket info from earlier in the lesson to calculate the correct tax amount for Mr. and Mrs. Brown. Then compare to the result in the 2018 tax table. If the Browns believe the table without doing any calculations, will they pay too much, too little, and by how much? Okay, so their taxable income is 25,300. Okay, so that means, and they're married filing jointly. So married filing jointly, and they're twenty five thousand three hundred. So they're in this category. They're in the twelve percent. So they're going to pay all of the ten percent and part of the twelve percent. And then plus part of. 12%. Okay, so all of the 10% is the first 19,050. So they're going to pay 10% of the 19,050. So that means they're going to pay 1,905 from the first bracket, and then they're going to pay 12% of part of the second bracket. So they're going to take their income, which falls in the second bracket, and they're going to subtract the, the bracket before its upper boundary. So they're 25,300 subtracting the upper boundary from the previous bracket. 25,300 minus 1950. So they're taking 12% of 6,250, that's this. So $750. So we have to add them. So 1905 plus 750 is 2,655. So they would have paid 2,658. So they, <clears throat> using the table above, they would have paid $3 too much. And so that's the kind of the disadvantage of using the table. And that's because they felt the bottom of this 
bracket, if they actually made closer to the upper of their bracket, they would have been closer to the correct amount. So number four says, what would happen to you if you failed to pay your taxes? Discussing if you're able, maybe do a little bit of interest or internet research. So if you don't pay your taxes, there are fines. Um, I don't know if you can go to jail. I'm not sure. I, I know there's extensions you can get if you don't have money. Um, if you actually owe more money than what you thought, um, you can file for an extension so that you have some extra time to pay that. Okay. okay. Um, page 349. Oh, and I want to make sure everybody knows that question three was a, is a lesson check value. So it's 2,655. It's this right here is your lesson check. The last lesson check for unit three. Okay. So page 349 here says, where do your tax dollars go? While paying taxes really hurts, it can help at least want at least some to know exactly what those dollars are accomplishing. There are a handful of websites that illustrate where federal tax dollars go. And for people who stink at percents, which of course does not include you, on some sites you can just enter a taxable income and see how that money go, gets divided up. But we don't need that, we'll just use the percents. So this is from 2017 and um, it's definitely different every year and it's definitely different with every president. So it's important to kind of just check them out and see where your tax dollars go. So in 2017, 29.81% of your tax dollars were going to health care. Now, I don't know what kind of health care, if that's public health care or if that's research for medicines, I'm not sure. 23.8% um, was going to military. 14.2% um, of your tax dollars are going to interest on the national debt, crazy. Um, and so it's just, it's listed there. So our last two questions are five and six on page 350. If you paid 6,500 in federal taxes in 2017, how much of your money went to education? So education is right here. And it was 3.99%. So 3.99%, so 0 0.0399 times 6,500. And so that means $259.35 went to education from your taxes. Number six says, for every $100,000 in income tax revenue collected by the IRS in 2017, how much went just to pay interest on the national debt? And we brought that up. Interest on the national debt was 14.2%. 14.2%. So 0.142 times that 100,000. Fourteen thousand two hundred. Mm -hmm. A lot of money. <clears throat> so catch us back for the videos um, from when I'm answering questions in live class because we're going to go through um, the three six worksheet together. I really want to make sure that you know how to find your tax bracket so that you can really get a lot out of the project on your future jobs taxes. So catch me back for that this week. <laughs>